reviews. Today, I'm going to be going off script slightly, as the movie I'll be evaluating is not a Christmas horror movie. But it is still celebratory for me. You see, I belong to a special club. A club with exclusive members, all of whom individually agree that we're blessed and shouldn't take our membership for granted. I belong to the club of persons that truly enjoy their mother-in-law's company. My mother-in-law is a fantastic lady and I love our opportunities for visits. One recurring thing keeps getting brought up in conversation though, especially when the topic of this channel arises. Michael, I'm not even going to attempt her lovely Scottish accent. Michael, if you want to watch a really bad movie, a really bad movie, you must watch The Beast of Hollow Mountain. So after putting it off for far too long, I have decided that on this day, December 8th, 2022, her birthday, I would finally get around to making a video review dedicated to Irene as I tackle the 1956 cowboy monster movie, The Beast of Hollow Mountain. Directed by Edward Nassauer and Ismael Rodriguez and written by Robert Hill, Jack DeWitt, and according to IMDB, from an idea by Willis H. O'Brien. I love that, from an idea by. Given what this film is about, it just conjures images of a guy fully loaded, holding a swishing near empty handle of scotch, slurring out a story suggestions. It's a Western with a f***ing dinosaur printed, Eddie. Starring Guy Madison as our white savior lead, Jimmy, who owns a cattle ranch in Mexico alongside his partner, Felipe, played by Carlos Rivas. Strange events begin occurring as cattle start disappearing from the grazing fields, and as far as they can tell, it has something to do with the quicksand-laden swamps near Hollow Mountain, which the locals refer to as a cursed place to be avoided. There's a large amount of subplot revolving around land disputes, cattle trading prices, a drunk father and plucky son duo, crossed romantic wires, and so forth that despite firmly being in subplot territory, still manages to stretch out 90% of the film's short 79 minute runtime. The main plot being the missing cattle and the creature that resides in the area of Hollow Mountain that's responsible. So is this movie really as bad as my mother-in-law claims? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not great, I'm gonna be honest, but I also didn't find it terrible. More than anything, I think the word I'd attribute to this one is, Delightful. This is little more than your standard odor fare of the 1950s and all the pros and cons contained within. But then we do get to the silly delight of the monster towards the last 15 or so minutes of the film. And it most definitely ends on a high note of stop motion, rubber monster boots whimsy. As far as Westerns go, I was kind of raised on them. My father introduced me to a lot of the old timey stuff of his childhood, the Gene Autry and Roy Rogers tassel wearing singing cowboys that he grew up with. And although I enjoyed them well enough, I don't think I really grew into my full love of Westerns until I was older and started experiencing the grim grittiness of future generational installments. The spaghetti westerns of the late 60s and early 70s, and then the more grown-up fare of films like Tombstone, Unforgiven, etc., showed me a side of the cowboy era that wasn't all flattering or clean. And in that, I found something magical. My father and my opinions decidedly diverged. He believed cowboys should be clean-shaven, good guys wore white hats, and bad guys wore black hats, and no nuance really found between. Myself... I love nuance. I love nuance and storylines. I love nuance and characters and their morals and motivations. And I love the questions and situations that arise in those shades of gray under the blackened teeth and dust caked sweaty brows. I even enjoyed going back and finding the more tragic and complex storylines in the Westerns of that era that the Beast of Hollow Mountain comes from. Films such as High Noon, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and Anthony Mann's Man of the West. The Beast of Hollow Mountain most definitely resides on the more sterile and family accessible side of the cowboy tales. And in that, any complexity is lost for the sake of generic storytelling. One thing that kind of surprised me was the cultural snapshot of being set in Mexico and how that was treated somewhat gingerly. 
mostly. <laughs> Being a 50s odor in Mexico, I was bracing myself for some pretty low hanging stereotypes and zooming in on some characters, most notably the drunk father character of Pancho, those stereotypes are in place. But zooming out and showing the broader scope of the village settings, the celebrations of the villagers wearing chinelos, the vibrant colors of the people, the cementerio, and so forth, I was honestly kind of impressed at the cultural snapshot captured by this film. And then we get to the monster. Oh, the monster, a stop motion 50s Hollywood interpretation of a T-Rex in all its cheesy glory. Yes, it was terrible. But in that awfulness, I couldn't help but find myself smiling from ear to ear. My wife watched this movie with me and we were both cracking up every time it was on screen. For having a fairly benign, uninteresting watch of a generic Western film leading up to this point, the last 15 minutes of The Beast of Hollow Mountain was the cinematic embodiment of ending on a high note. If there had been no beast, and the plot simply resolved with showing the missing cattle having just been rustled, I would have forgotten this movie immediately after end credits, lost in a sea of my letterboxed ratings, but the beast. The wacky eyeballs, the rubber feet and walking close-up shots, the ludicrousness of it all. For my mother-in-law, it made for an awful movie. For me, it made for timely salvation. The next time I watch a movie, any movie that winds up in a place of benign, sterile mediocrity, I know what the missing ingredient is that will save it in the 11th hour. The Beast of Hollow Mountain. <laughs> So happy birthday, mom. I hope it's a great one and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope everybody that watched this enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like and subscribe and you know, feel free to leave comments below. Heck, wish my mother-in-law happy birthday down there. I'm sure she'd love to read those. So thank you very much. And remember next time you wanna watch an odor, first make sure that it's good and rotted.